All right, it's, all right, it's on. Always weird kind of looking at yourself in the camera, but in this video, I want to go over a forgotten technique on managing negative feelings. And this is a technique I've been using the last few months, especially because nothing seems to be going my way, especially with this YouTube channel. It's, it's tough because I do work on this channel with two other people and we all have full-time jobs and I would love to get together once a week and constantly try to pump out material or content, but it's a little frustrating, but I'm going to talk about the technique I personally use, and it seems to be a forgotten technique with all the information out in the world today, but speaking of information, we live in a very, very fortunate time. Information is everywhere. I mean, you can literally Google or YouTube any problem you ha have, and somebody who's experienced that problem could help you solve it. And, you know, help is everywhere. And it seems like everybody's an expert and they know what the hell they're talking about. But unfortunately, these negative feelings, it seems like depression and anxiety is skyrocketing. Not that it seems like it actually is. And this is before 2020. This is before the pandemic. But the pandemic just spiked it ridiculously. If you remember, there was like suicide. It was like a few suicides every single day, particularly in the state of California. And why this is, you know, honestly, nobody knows the actual answer. But what I believe is that there is special interest groups out there that profit off of our misery and i was recently reading a book by stephen pressfield the book is called the war of art and it was written in 2002 and he was saying in the book that he used to work for an advertising advertisement company in new york and his boss used to come out and tell them to make up a disease make your audience believe you have it and then sell them the cure. Now, I don't know if this is true, but this book was written in 2002. So let's say this is true. This is before, he was saying this before social media. Imagine if it's true what they're doing now. You know, the world is run by profit. It's run by people making money. And the number one way to make money is to create a tragedy, which creates an opportunity for a solution to be made to be sold all right so it's unfortunate it's very very unfortunate between the pharmaceutical companies selling medication i know with my father you know i recently just seen my dad go to, to the hospital and all these doctor's appointments and i see how they run it and i paid attention to it and i see how much it was really driven by money it wasn't driven to actually help my father get better it was driven to make more money and my dad is highly, highly medicated. And because I'm a son, you know, if I tell him something, he's kind of be a little skeptical because I'm a son. And he's been, I don't want to say brainwashed, but he believes that, you know, medication is going to help him, even though he's zombied out. But you probably want to know what this forgotten technique is. And let me tell you what it's not. And I can already feel like if you're watching this, it's like get to the point. And you probably want to choke me. Trust me, if you just wait around long enough, it's going to be worth it, okay? What it is it? All right, and that's my girlfriend in the background washing dishes. But what it is it is some form of expression, all right? We live in the age of expression. Everybody got to express themselves. Let people know how they feel. Express your feelings, all right? And... With all this expression of feelings, you would think the world would be a little bit better, but it isn't. People are getting angrier, more depressed, more agitated, more triggered, right? And why is this? Now, the reason for this is this expression, all it's really doing is adding more fuel to the fire. So whatever that negativity you have inside of you, when you start to express it, all you're doing is lifting the lid and the steam's coming up. 
but you're not actually getting down deep into the water and let the water actually disperse. It's just a little bit of steam. And if anything, you're adding more fire to it and it's boiling even hotter. All right? And especially if you're trying to express your feelings to a person who triggered you or who, a person you feel caused these negative feelings. And if you think that person is just going to actually sit there and take it and not get defensive, you got another thing coming. Because people, when they get, when they, when you try to tell them how you feel about what they did, they're just going to defend it and it's just going to agitate you even more. So don't do that. And stop expressing yourselves on social media. You don't have to, you know, write on Facebook, you know, the, the drama. Because then people are going to comment on it. And it's just going to keep adding more and more fuel. And before you know it, it becomes easier and easier for you to get triggered. It becomes, it, it almost becomes like a habit for you to start experiencing that feeling. And your life just becomes fueled with negativity. All right? So the second thing we do is we suppress it. And this is something that I do a lot. Or I, I did do and I'm trying to work on it to not do it. I shouldn't use the word try, but uh, it's a habit. But suppression, we push it down. Now, me personally, what I like to do is I like to drown myself in motivational YouTube videos, uh, motivational self-help books, just to distract myself if I start to feel a little depressed or things start to go, don't go my way. I try to reframe it in my head and twist it around. I do all these little mind tricks. That, you know, again, feels good in the moment, but all I'm actually doing is shoving it down. I'm just shoving it down to the point where the, the more I push it down, it's like a little ball. You're trying to push the ball into the water. It's going to just pop up a lot faster to the point where I bubble up and then I explode on somebody or I do something reckless. Okay? And that's my girlfriend again. I don't know if you can hear her. So don't do that. So now you're probably like, yo, what is this forgotten technique then? What should we be doing? We can't express ourselves, which is fight it. And we can't suppress it, which is run away from it, the fight or flight. What should we do? What is this forgotten technique? And I'll tell you what it is. And I got it from, you know, spiritual teachers. Uh, particularly my favorite one is Michael A. Singer. He wrote the book, The Untethered Soul. And this is basically the technique. When you get triggered, when you start to feel that negative feeling, there's a second where you can notice it, right? What you're going to do is notice it, isolate it, see where it is. So for me, when I get triggered, particularly angry, I start to feel the energy in my neck. All right? I start to feel this energy like really, really tight. What you're going to do is you notice it, you watch it. You let it do what it's do. You release the thoughts that is associated with the feeling. Let the feeling run, and it will run around and let it burn itself out, and then you release it. That's it. So, for instance, if I give you an example, how can you apply this? Let's say you click on a YouTube video, and there's this Asian guy who says he has this forbidding, forgotten mystery technique to help me release my negative feelings and about for seven or eight minutes he's just talking and talking and talking he's not letting you know what the technique is and you're starting to get agitated all right sound familiar feel where the agitation is coming from so for most people it's either in the stomach the chest the neck some people feel it in the heart feel the feeling notice it let it sit there, relax into it. Not saying relax the feeling. Relax, relax around the feeling. You relax. The feeling itself is just going to do what it's going to do. And then let it run out and then release the feeling. And the more you keep doing that, you'll start to notice certain triggers don't bother you as much. And it's kind of like the sun is touching the ice and it's melting the ice away. It's melting the trigger away. By you just noticing it and letting it run, which means you don't have to express it. So you don't have to punch me in the face for taking too long to get to the explanation. And then you don't have to suppress it and get agitated and click off the video. All right. So again, you don't have to fight it and you don't have to run away from it. You could feel it. And the shit sucks at first. It really does suck. But the more you practice it 
and it takes it, it, it takes conscious practice. It takes effort. All right, it's not easy. It's a tough thing to do, and it's almost in, um, against what you're used to doing. It's it's almost like it just feels funny. Like you feel like you have to do something about it. Either you have to run after it, or you have to push it down and run away from it. Just sit there, and you can even do this like you know. The old philosopher, the Greek philosopher Marcus Aurelius, Marcus Aurelius, he wrote the book Meditations. He used to say that every morning he used to think of, he used to do like a negative visualization. And he used to visualize like things that could go wrong and how he would respond to the situation and how. So you could you could do that yourself. You could like say with me, I could maybe, you know, maybe my girlfriend takes too long getting ready. And I tend to get triggered when that happens. She takes too long, right? I could literally sit there and visualize it and prepare myself for when it actually happens, feel the feeling, relax into the feeling, and then let the feeling run its course. And before you know it, the more and more I keep doing it, I keep practicing it, the less and less I get triggered. Now, some of us love getting triggered. Getting triggered is like being offended is like the new cool thing. But if you want to be different, you want to actually be happier, if you actually want to grow and not stay where you're at, you're going to want to learn this technique. So again, just sit in it. When you, when you feel the feeling, when things trigger you, notice it. There's a second where you could take time to notice it, relax into it, and let it run its course, and then eventually it will just start to let go. All right? So again, a great book is Michael A. Singer, The Untethered Soul. You can literally type them up, Michael A. Singer. Uh, a podcast that I listen to is uh, Doing the Real Work. All right, Doing the Real Work of Letting Go. So type in, just type in Michael A. Singer and listen to it. It's about an hour long. I've probably listened, over the last few months, I've probably listened to it like over 10 times. I try to listen to it at least once every two weeks to remind myself of this. All right, so hopefully me explaining it, I'll live by it. I have been living by it for the last few months, and it's gotten my life has gotten a whole lot better. I kind of learned to let go of my expectations. So again, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Sorry, I haven't been able to get together with my team and do more stretch videos. We got we got videos planned, but with the holidays, with the cold weather, with the full time job, it's been a little tough. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm trying to do something, and I realize I need to shave. I definitely need to shave, but. It's been tough with time, all right? So, peace.